Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for increase because God wants to enlarge your territory that he might be able to bless so many others even through you. Our text this morning is found in the book of John chapter 14 and Acts chapter 10. We want to look at those two passages of scripture as we continue our Dominion series. John chapter 14, beginning at verse number 8 and Acts 10. 1 John 14, beginning at verse 8, reads as follows. Philip spoke unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Now, Acts 10 and 38, just one verse there. Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. And it reads as follows. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. I want to speak from the subject today. I really want to ask a question as it relates to why many of us as believers fail to really walk in our dominion. And the question is, are you unplugged? Are you unplugged? Let's talk about that for a moment. What it means to be unplugged. To be unplugged is to not be plugged in. <clears throat> if you remember... As we talked about even on last week, we took time to bring out and really express the truth that God literally plugged everything in the earth into Adam. He plugged in the, 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 the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field, the, every creeping thing that creeping up on the face of the earth. Everything was plugged into Adam. Even Eve was plugged into Adam because when Adam failed God, when he disobeyed, when he rebelled, claiming independence against God by doing thus what he desired as opposed to what God had ordered him to do. When Adam sinned and was disconnected from God, everything in the earth realm suffered the consequence of that action. The Bible says the ground was cursed for his sake. The, 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 the thorns and thistles it began to yield. The, the animals began to have animosity with one another and even mankind. I'm, I mean, everything got discombobulated. Eve ate first and nothing happened. But when Adam ate, the eyes of them both were open. I mean, everything changed when Adam disobeyed God. Because everything was plugged into Adam. So Adam's decision to rebel affected everything connected to him. See, when you, when you operate in dominion, the thing that you have dominion over 
is, is connected to you or is subject to you in such a degree that your decisions affect it. As, as, as the father and the husband of my family growing up, my wife and my children were plugged into me. Every decision I made affected my entire household. If I didn't go to work, my whole household felt the ramifications of that decision. If, if daddy didn't make no money, if, if daddy uh, uh, would have went to jail, if daddy would have got caught up in some scandal or foolishness, my entire household would have been affected by that act. Why? They connected to me. I'm the foundation. Ah, oh, I need you to catch this. My life didn't change until I understood my life wasn't just about me. I live crazy, reckless, lawlessly until I really got the revelation, until the light came on that my life wasn't just mine. He's the one to why, why my family worried about what I'm doing. I ain't hurting them. This is my life. Why are they worried about it? Because if you're a person with any type of responsibility, with any type of sense of dominion, with any type of sense of purpose, then your life ain't just about you. Everything connected to you is affected by you. And that's how God created us to be. We weren't created to be independent. He created us to be interdependent. Oh, we find out as we look into it, God plugged everything into Adam. Let, let, let me explain this again. Because everything was plugged into Adam, and he was given dominion over everything on the earth. Now, when Adam failed, well, well, let me, let, me, let me make sure you understand what gave him his dominion. God created the earth. The Bible said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all of them that dwell therein. So everything created, God is the owner. Now, God who is the owner of the earth and everybody in it and everything in it, he created Adam. And he spoke to all creation that it could hear and says, let them, mankind, Adam and Eve, have dominion over all creation, over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, beast of the field, over all the earth, every creeping thing that creeping upon the earth. So all of the earth received the announcement of who their new manager is. So it's all plugged into Adam. Everything God owned was plugged into Adam, watch this, because Adam was plugged into God. Oh, I need you to catch it. I'm going to say it again. Everything God created was plugged into Adam because Adam was plugged into God, the creator of all things. What happened in the Garden of Eden that messed us up, when Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he unplugged himself from God. In the day you eat, you should surely die. He died in that day. But why didn't he drop dead? Because real death is spiritual death. What does spiritual death mean? It means disconnected from God. To be spiritually dead is to be separated from God or disconnected or unplugged from God. Unplugged. Now when Adam's unplugged, he becomes subject to everything. The unplugged version of Adam is one that's letting what he was meant to have dominion over dominate him. The unplugged version of Adam is letting what he see tell him what to say. He's allowing the earth realm to be his source of information. His belief system is based on what he experiences, not what God said. That's the unplugged version of Adam. That's the sinful version of Adam. He became a sinner when he unplugged from the Father. 
Now let's look at this. So the fall of man is what occurred when Adam unplugged from his true source, Jehovah. So then what, what happened? Oh, I'm glad you asked. What, what happened was this. When God laid out the punishments, he says, and you know, Satan, because you have done this, I will take the seed of the woman and put enmity between you and him. He shall bruise your head, and you will only bruise his heel. I'm sending a man to defeat you and redeem mankind. I'm getting my family back. And who God was talking about was Jesus. So who is Jesus? Jesus is my plug. Woo! I need you to catch this. Jesus came to plug me back into God to plug me back into the kingdom. See, what Adam lost was the kingdom. Dominion is the kingdom. When he lost his dominion, it's because he lost his kingdom. He lost his kingdom because he lost his relationship with the king. When Jesus reconnects me to the king, the moment I'm reconnected to the king, I'm, I got back my kingdom. And now I operate in the dominion that was given to me. Jesus is my plug. See, let, let me make it plain. Say in the streets, right? You know, we hustling, we coming up with things, we getting the inside track and all of that, and be like, hey man, how 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 you getting those free whatever? Are you getting access to hook up on, on that situation or whatever that might be in the streets, but man, I got man, I got the plug. Man, I man, I man, I got a plug in there, and they man, she be hooking me up and woo 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 woo. A plug in the streets is what a, a person that gives you access to favor that you wouldn't have without it. Uh, uh, they use a plug in, in, in the streets as you're talking about a drug dealer and where he gets his supply from. That's my plug. It, 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 it gives you access into favor or a power source greater than you. So now you get to operate and function in a way because of who or what you're connected to. Am I, am I making this plain? Jesus is my plug to Jehovah. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father except by me. He's my plug to God. That's why I don't... You may operate biblical principles. God is love, yes. You may operate uh, 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 sowing and reaping. You might call it karma. You might be of whatever belief system you're of and operate biblical principles. But when it comes to reconnecting to God, ain't but one plug. His name Jesus. Now, you may operate some of his principles. But to really have a relationship, you need the plug. <laughs> and that's what Jesus gives me. Now, I want to break this down, but let me read, let me read my opening scripture again because I want you to see how this works because I really want this to be comprehensive today. I really want you to be able to get it. Watch this. Watch this. Um, in, John, in John chapter 14 that I open up with, Philip asked the question. He asked Jesus to show us the Father. And Jesus is like, come on, man, I've been with you all this time, and you ain't learned nothing. You still tripping? He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, you, you, you're misunderstanding how this works. He says, he said you, how you going to ask me to show you the Father? Do you not believe that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak unto you are not myself, they're the Father's words. You're hearing from God when I speak. He said, do you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father at the same time is in me? 
If you don't believe what I'm telling you, at least believe it for the work's sake. I know you saw me speak to the wind and it obeyed me. I know you saw me walk on water and even give Peter the authority to walk on water. I know you saw me raise the dead. I know you saw me open blinded eyes. I know you saw me cause the deaf to, to talk. I caused the lame to walk. I know you saw me heal the sick. I know you've seen me operating cursing fig trees and they no longer bearing fruit and drying up from the root instantly. I know you've seen the works. How can you deny who I am? How can you deny who you're really seeing in action? You're seeing the spiritual heavenly father in manifestation in physical form. Because now let me explain it. Let's get deeper. When God got ready to save us, this was so profound that man got us into trouble, so man had to get us out of it. So watch what God did. God literally became one of us in order to redeem all of us. <laughs> God did this. I don't have time. To, let me just give it to you. God, for a moment in time, he unplugged himself, watch this, from his royalty, his throne, his robe. His, 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 his kingly position in heaven. He unplugged himself from his glorious, yeah, I can say his glory because glory is the manifestation of God. That, that, made him undeniably God. And he subjected himself to come through the door of a virgin named Mary as he impregnated himself in her through the power of his word. And he subjected himself, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, to be born in a manger. See, I want you to see the unplug. <laughs> virgin of God. But stay with me because I want to make this real important. But here's because here's the catch. He was still God. But he subjected himself to come in the likeness of sinful flesh to become like you and I in order to pay the price that we owe. Because a man did the crime, a man had to do that time. So he Became like us. He suffered the type of stuff we suffered, like betrayal, rejection, denial, folk acting brand new with you, being in positions that look like poverty. There was no room for him in the end. He, he was arrested. Jesus did time. Jesus subjected himself to being humiliated to being bullied, talked about, criticized, ridiculed, spit on. He was beaten. He was bruised for our iniquities, wounded for our transgressions. He took nails in his hands, nails in his feet. He was pierced in the side. He was crucified. He went through all of this. And, and when Pilate said, aren't you going to speak for yourself? He said, you better let me shut up because I can speak one word. And 10,000 legion of angels shall come. And you don't want to see what they're going to do. Watch this. Don't make me plug all the way up. <laughs> say, I'm still God. But I came in the unplugged virgin. <laughs> uh, we call things unplugged. Like uh, you see singers come out of the studio, right? And, and, and all of the sound equipment. And maybe they just got an acoustic guitar and a microphone. And they sing their hits, but it's called Unplugged. 
because they've removed all of the fluff. So that's what I'm speaking of right now when I'm speaking of God coming in the unplugged version. <laughs> with no fluff, with no robe. He was so unplugged that the church folk and the preachers didn't even recognize him. They said the reason he cast out devils, he's Beelzebub. He's the chief devil. They call God the devil. He was so unplugged. When, when Judas got ready, when, 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 when the Roman guards wanted to uh, capture him, they paid Judas 30 pieces of silver to betray him to show him which one was God. <laughs> which one was Jesus? He was this common looking. Oh, the God of all creation. This common looking. Wow, that's incredible. And here he is in this state. And he does it, why? To save me. Because what Satan didn't know, watch this, because he had came like me and became a man that when you had him nailed to the cross, come on, stay with me now. When you had him nailed in his hands and nailed in his feet, you were literally, woo, plugging me, human being, hey, back into my heavenly father. And when he died and rose with all power of heaven and earth, and I accepted him in his glory, he replugged me into how Adam unplugged me so I got back my kingdom because I got back my relationship with the king so I got back my dominion so in Jesus I'm replugged in and I can operate in the dominion over everything that he had plugged into me. But the key is I can't operate like I'm unplugged. Now, okay, let's make it plain. Watch this, watch this. I'm going to read one more thing, and I want to show illustration. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, hallelujah. I wanna, let, let me read this. Let me go back to Acts 10 and 38, because I, I, I need you to catch something. There's one more point that I need to be made. I need to make sure this point is clear before I go deeper. Acts 10 and 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Don't miss that. That's the key word. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. What do you mean by that, preacher? Here's what I mean. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth was a little... What, a, what, what, what was seemingly judged by society as a nobody town. Nothing spectacular. Like they, they even asked, can any good thing come from Nazareth? That ain't nowhere. That ain't L.A. That ain't New York. That ain't Miami. That ain't Chicago. That, that, that ain't none of these uh, glorious cities. That's, that's Nazareth. Watch this, watch this. That, that's that's Kashada. Somebody looking at Kashada. What is that? That's where I'm from. Kashada, Louisiana. A town that most people have never heard of in their life. People from Louisiana ain't never heard of Kashada. Because I'm showing you its significance. God identified Jesus by the port by, by the characteristic of him that made him appear. Less than, the most common, the most, the humblest form, the most humble. He says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Not Jesus Christ, the common Jesus that's from the town that people don't respect. God anointed that man with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now, here's what I want you to see right here. It identifies Jesus at his most lowest state from a societal point of view. And it says, God anointed this man, Jesus, 
from this town nobody knew about, who everybody thought was insignificant, nothing good could come out of there. God anointed that Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. And when God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about literally raising the dead, healing the sick, I mean, doing miraculous works. And how did he do it? Watch this. He did it because of the plug he had. He did it because of who he was plugged into. See, God anointing him with it was God plugging him into it. One more scripture, and we're going there. One more scripture, and we're going there. I, 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 I want to go back to John 14, where Jesus asked Philip this. Well, here's what Jesus said to Philip, verse 12. John 14 and 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, now, this is after he told him, I'm in the Father, the Father's in me, all of that. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lord. Wait, wait, I, I, I get you that you can use us to do some miracles, but Jesus just said, the works that he do shall we do also. Now, I don't know about that. Now, come on, God. That's too much, ain't it? And not only did Jesus say that, he said, and greater works. How on earth can we do greater works than Jesus? Now, come on, Jesus. It sounds like you're tripping right now. How is that possible? By what I just read to you in Acts 10.38. What did you read to us in Acts 10.38? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Not Jesus Christ, even though he was Jesus Christ. He anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He identified that. He identified him that way for a purpose. So you can understand, he anointed the lowest seemingly version of him. But when God anointed him with power, it changed everything. All right, now I want you to catch this illustration. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. This is nothing but a simple surge plug, strip plug, whatever you want to call it. But now... If this is plugged into any of these outlets in this building, it's now connected to the electrical power that runs this entire sanctuary. When you plug this in, anything you plug into this can function out of the power that supports this entire building. Woo. The reason you can plug in your cell phone and it get charged is because it's connected to power to charge it. You can plug in a radio and it'll play because it's connected to power to cause it to maximize its potential. You can plug in a fan and it'll blow because it's connected to power that charges its ability. For Jesus to say, the works that I do shall you do also and greater. I can't never be God. Jesus was God. I can't never be Christ. Jesus was Christ. He was deity. He's divine. So if he's telling me I can do what he did, that means what he did, he didn't do it because he was God. Stay with me. Stay with me. He didn't do it because he was deity, because he was divine. Because when he came to the earth to be like me, he unplugged. You're not catching me. I need you to listen. And he came as a man. He, he was still God. He came as a man. That's why from the time Jesus was born, Joseph and Mary had to hide him. Why? The devil was trying to kill him. Through Herod, they was trying to kill him. But he's Jesus. You can't kill God. This shows you that he unplugged because he was vulnerable. Ooh. You ready for this? Jesus a.k.a. God in the flesh, was running for his life. 
see, uh, you not, you don't want to be real. He was on the run. And this happened through all these years. Do you know we don't have no record of Jesus doing not one miracle through the first 29 years of his life? We just hear one instance when he was 12 years old, he was asking some good questions to, 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 to scribes, lawyers and stuff, doctors. That's all we have. No miracles, no signs, no wonders. To what happened? He was 30. When he got 30, he was baptized of John. Don't miss this. And the Spirit of God descended upon him as a dove. The Holy Ghost fell upon him and anointed him with power. Who did it anoint? Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. When it anointed Jesus from what people would call nobody land, just a common carpenter's son who people teased and called him a bastard because they knew Joseph wasn't his real daddy. It anointed him. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. After that happened, that anointing, Plugged him back in to the glory he left in heaven. Oh! He plugged him back in to the kingdom, to, to, to the power, to the fullness through the Holy Ghost. And after Jesus got that plug, <laughs> when the Holy Ghost descended upon him, he came out turning water into wine. Hey, giving sight to the blind. Ha, ah, raising the dead, casting out devils. He didn't do none of that until he was anointed by God with the Holy Ghost. I said, what? He said, what did I do? Should you do also and greater? How? We can't be God because I didn't do the works because I was God. I did the works that I did as a man who was a common man from one of the lowest places, so don't matter what hood you grew up in. I did it as a man from a common place born in a manger that just so happened to be anointed by God with the Holy Ghost. So the same plug I used, Jesus said, I gave you access to the same plug because I plugged you back into God, which means now God can anoint you with the Holy Ghost and with power and you can function in the same dominion that you saw me function in. I, came, I became a man to show you what you're working with. Woo! Woo! Four! Did you miss that? I became a man to show you what you're working with. I plug you in. Why are you still acting unplugged? You praying for me to come and do what I plug you into. I plug the fan into the wall. But you go sit in your house hot because you waiting on me to come turn the knob. Boy, you better, I'm preaching better than you listening. You better catch this. I plugged in the device. You gonna wait on me to hit the switch? It's time for you to hit the switch. Because if you ain't able to hit the switch, then I need to ask a different question. Are you unplugged? Are you unplugged? Watch this. Let me read, let me read another scripture. Let me read another scripture. Let's go real quick, real quick. Last scripture, last scripture. I want to go to John 15. I want to read something out of St. John chapter 15. Just one chapter over from where we just were in 14. Because in John 14, Jesus was telling Philip how he's plugged into the Father. So everything he sees is from the Father. Now in John 15, Jesus wants to show us 
what we're able to do when we're plugged into him. Ah, John 15, look at this, verses 4 and 5, just two verses. Verses 4 and 5. Here's what Jesus says. Abide in me, and I in you. Kind of sound like what he said about him and the Father, right? As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. He said, the only reason you can produce fruit is because you connected to me. I'm the vine, you're the branch. The reason fruit can show up on the branch, because it's connected to the vine. Verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Now, let's get it good. Now, it's getting good to me. Watch this, watch this. This blesses me right here. Without me, you can do nothing. Jesus says, see this search? If I plug this into the wall, then whatever you plug into this will operate. The source that runs this building is God the Father running everything. Adam got unplugged from God the Father. God became a man, called himself Jesus, and came back and as a man plugged into himself after paying the price for us. Plugged into himself. That man's name is Jesus. Jesus saying, if you will plug into me, oh, and allow me to be hooked up to you, then everything that's flowing from the Father to me cannot flow through you. Sickness can flow. Look, healing for sickness can flow through you. Prosperity for poverty can flow through you. Peace, love, joy can flow through you. Whatever you need can now flow if you're plugged in. But just because you're plugged in don't mean it ain't a switch you got to hit. And this is where we miss it in church. Right now, if you plug a fan into this, and I plug it into the wall, the fan ain't just go blow. You still got to turn it on. But the reason you can get results when you turn it on is because it's plugged in. And many times we praying and we want God to turn us on. Have you turned on your gift? Have you turned on your faith? Have you turned on your ability? But preacher, how do I get plugged in? Simple. This is the role of faith. Maybe now you will understand faith better than you've ever understood it before. Faith plugs me into the source called grace. Oh, my God. I'm trying to quit. Let me move this because I'm, I'm going now. Faith plugs me into the source called grace. If God hadn't given it by grace, I couldn't receive it with faith. Romans 10 and 13 says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How can they call on him whom they have not believed? How can they believe in him whom they have not heard? How can he hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus came teaching the kingdom of God everywhere he went. Why? I got to change the way people think. I got to cut faith come by hearing. I got to make sure they're hearing the truth so they can start believing the truth. Because whenever they start believing the truth, they'll start acting on the truth. Whenever they start acting on the truth, they'll start walking in the truth because they will have received the truth. Here is how it works. I've got to hear it. I've got to hear it. I've got to hear who I am in God. All your life, the devil been wanting you to hear, you ain't this. You can't do that. Ain't nobody going to trust you. You ain't never get a chance. Don't nobody fool with you. You ain't no good. You know what you did in the past. You ain't worthy. You ain't worth nothing. You need to sit down somewhere. You go die from there. Didn't your grandma die from there? You got to die from something. You might as well accept it. This is what it is. You can quit it. You're going to be by yourself all your life. Blah, 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 blah. And now, you didn't start believing that. you more plugged in the negative than you are positivity and wondering why things ain't getting no better. Check what you plugged into. Lord, help me. Before I can plug into what God has ordained for my life, I need to unplug 
from some things that's not ordained for my life. I can't plug one device in the two sources at the same time. I got a device. I can only plug it into one thing at a time. You can't succeed when you plugged into failure. You can't have confidence when you plugged in the low self-esteem. God ain't your problem. It's where you put your plug. And where you put your plug is determined by what are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are you thinking? What are you confessing? And how are you acting? That would show me what you plugged into. Dominion can flow if you plug into the flow. As long as the branch is connected to the vine, what's in the vine will be in the branches. Listen to me. The same guy that I am right now, I was the same guy when I was a teenager and when I was a young adult. But I didn't get the same results that I get now. I had the same abilities. God had the same gifts inside of me. I, was, I had the same skill set. But I was plugged in the low self-esteem. I was plugged into doubt. I, I lacked confidence. I, 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 was, I was plugged into condemnation because I did some bad stuff and I didn't feel worthy. I, I, was, I was plugged into not feeling good about myself. I saw myself in a negative light. And so my life couldn't produce beyond what I was plugged into. What the Word of God did for me, and I'm through, we're going home, I'm out of time. What the Word of God did for me, it changed my perspective. I started hearing differently. I started seeing in my mind differently. I started thinking differently. I started viewing myself differently. I started seeing what God saw, and I started believing it. And then the same abilities, same skill set, same dude started operating differently because of what I was plugged into now. And I realized if I would have had this awareness and this revelation way back then, I could have had res different results way back then. God isn't the problem. Our lack of understanding and application is the problem. Plug in. I'm through, but I dare you to. For real, for real, plug in. No, no, don't let this just be a piece of furniture anymore. Plug in. Dare to believe what he said. Dare to see yourself how he's ordained you to be. And dare to operate in it right now. But to do that, you got to resist what you've been yielding to. You got to resist what you've been yielding to. What do you mean resist what you've been yielding to? You've been yielding to the status quo. You've been yielding to the way you think, I ain't good at this. Who told you you wasn't good at that? Who told you you would make it? So you got to challenge all of that stuff. Because who you, I, Lord, you know I got to stop. Because who you really are is who you secretly desire to be in the depths of your heart. That's your real identity. And that's the person you won't let out. Because you're scared. Don't be afraid. That's the weapon Satan is using to keep you trapped. The chest that you fear opening is usually the one that holds your treasure. Are you unplugged? From this day forward, let's get plugged in and be all he's ordained us to be. Amen? Amen. I'm not out of word. But I'm out of time. If you're here right now and you've never made that wonderful discovery of knowing Jesus in a personal way, this is how you first get plugged in, period. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ personally, 
then you are not plugged into God. I don't care what nobody told you. Jesus ain't a plug. He's the plug. Ain't no other way to Jehovah except through Jesus Christ. If that's you and you believe that he died for your sins and God raised him from the dead, why don't you accept him today? How so? Just pray this prayer after me. And if you're sincere and you believe it in your heart, he'll come and reside in you today. Repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord, please forgive me for all of my sin. I believe you, Jesus, that you died for me. I believe in my heart you rose from the dead so I could be saved. Make me a new person. Teach me your ways and how to live for you. Let the rest of my life be the best of my life. Thank you for plugging me in to my heavenly father. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> amen. If you prayed that prayer, amen, we're grateful to God for that. And we want to help you get started on this journey. So if you would be so kind and just let us know, we want to help you. And we want you to be everything he's ordained you to be. So why don't you email us right there at calvaryhawthorne at gmail.com. And we want to help you get started on this kingdom journey with supporting you and resources and everything we can do because now we're one body, you and the family. Welcome to the family of God through Christ Jesus. Amen. We're grateful to God. Let me remind you a few announcements really quick, a few announcements. Today at 1 o'clock p.m., we have communion right here in the parking lot. Come on and drive in and join me for communion. We're going to have an excellent, exciting time. We're going to worship together. We're going to partake of communion together. We're going to give God praise together. Join me in the parking lot. Just drive in. You don't have to get out of your cars. Amen. And let us have some form of fellowship during this pandemic. Amen. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the communion, in the, in the parking lot, drive in communion, 1 p.m. Also, we're grateful that on last week, our February newsletter went out the last week of February. Praise God. Amen. And if you've been missing out on these wonderful newsletters that go out once a month, that's because we don't have your information. Just email us, calvaryhawthorne at gmail.com. And after you email us we'll, and give us your first and last name, we'll add you to that list. You can also email us if you would like some support from Green Foundation. It's a group that we partner with, a nonprofit organization. It's been a blessing here at Calvary Baptist Church and so many other places. Green Foundation has covid uh, support for you, those that need support during COVID right now. And you don't have to have COVID. I'm just saying during this time we're living in, in this pandemic. So whether that's you need help with food, maybe trying to pay utilities or rent or, or various other things, health insurance. If you would email us at calvaryhawthorne at gmail.com and let us give us your first and last name and your telephone number. We need a good contact number for you then someone from Green Foundation will be reaching out to you to see how they can support you in this time of need. On this coming Saturday, Pastor Johnson, Pastor Taurus Johnson from Louisiana will be joining me for the interactive Bible study at 10 a.m. We have such a good time as we deal with understanding dominion and just allow God to allow us to share revelation with one another, iron sharp as iron, and so much wisdom comes forth. You can join us on all of our platforms, Facebook, YouTube and everything else. And remember, immediately after this, at 11.30 a.m., Children Church premieres. Get those children in front of that YouTube screen. Go to YouTube in the search engine. Put at CBC Children Church, and it will pop up. It's the one that's premiering today. The title of today's message is Noah's Ark. They're going to learn about Noah's Ark. They have great demonstrations, and we're encouraging your children to do a demonstration like they did, one of those experiments, and uh, record it and email them. Email us here at the church, and we would love to show that as well. You know, I've been thinking about maybe even giving out some prizes to children that win, that put up the most exciting one, and maybe we can just do something to encourage them. And we always want them to learn and grow in God's Word. So make sure they're learning and they're getting that teaching 
11.30 a.m. It premieres, so don't miss it. Until then, that's my time. Until the next time, I'll see you in time. <laughs> Gotta go. God bless. Thank you.